That's fair enough. Okay, so we're just finishing up picks and bans here. On blue team, they've banned out Evelyn, Thresh, and Wukong. Evelyn has remained a semi... competitively viable jungler. Uh, she, she works in two stages, I would say. Uh, number one, she works really, really well in super low elo. And that's because stealth OP, people have no map awareness, they don't counterplay her. And so they'll stay in lane with like 100 health, Eve shows up, boom, free kills. So that is very, very powerful. And in high elo, she also is very, very strong because... Oh my god, we're getting so many Twitch messages. Um, sorry about that. She, she can set up a lot of plays because you have your team communicating and working with you. Uh, that being said, though, in, mid, in mid-range gameplay, I don't think Evelyn is worth a ban. She's not that popular, and she has some clear-cut weaknesses. Thresh, very, very potent support. I agree with the ban. Same with Wukong. I've said many times in my, uh, in my solo queue gameplay, I ban Wukong because I don't want to ban... Oh my god. Why am I getting so many messages? Oh, okay. Well, it's spamming me with notifications. Uh, sorry, so I ban Wukong because I don't want to ban Yasuo. I don't feel Yasuo is worth a ban, but Yasuo is incredibly strong if paired with someone like Wukong. So that, that's why I would usually ban that out, and he is a very strong jungler in his own right. And then on the split side, they've banned out Lee Sin, Vine, Kassadin. I mentioned in the first game, I don't think Kassadin is worth banning since the, the rework. He's just, he, he's not that terrifying. He's fine. He's not completely underpowered, but I don't understand why you would possibly pl want to ban him. Uh, then in terms of picks, they have a mid lane Zed, jungle Elise, a top lane Shivana, a support Morgana combined with a Twitch. Uh, Morgana is an interesting choice to pair with Twitch. I actually really like it, especially when versus someone like a Leona, who's going to want to all in engage. Twitch has a lot of issues dealing with the sort of tanky all in engage uh, meta of bot lane right now, and Morgana covers that very, very nicely. You combine that with the very long duration of Dark Binding, and uh, it gives Twitch enough time to 100 to 0 someone. So I, I really like that. I, I like that pairing. I don't know if I like it just as a general pick in terms of Twitch, but I, I like that they're sort of covering each other's weaknesses and exemplifying each other's strengths. So really good decision there. On the split side, then they have a... Okay, so that's another Quinn top. A Varus Leona bot lane, a Pantheon, what I'm assuming is mid... Oh, wait, wait. Weren't they talking about doing an AP Varus in a workshop? Well, we'll wait and see where they go then. Regardless, though, um, I kind of like blue team in terms of AoE comp. If Morgana can survive and if Morgana can set up some fights, that would uh, combo very, very nicely with the Twitch ultimate across everyone. Shivana can jump into the middle and be a really super annoying. Elise can peel and assassinate, and Zed can pop any priority target if he plays properly. So I, I don't know, I, I like their team comp and I like what they could do if they get ahead and if they are landing their combos. But on the split side, purple team is no slouch with the uh, Leona ultimate leading into Jax, Varus, and Pantheon engages. That is incredibly deadly. What's really going to be interesting to me though is if this is an AP Varus or if it's an AD carry Varus. If it is an AP Varus, the ultimate combined with um, just the, the, the blight stats is deadly. They can pretty much kill anyone that they want if they're able to detonate a max number of stacks. And combining that with a Pantheon, Jax, and Leona, amounts of CC, they should be able to hopefully pick off some targets. So it'll be interesting to see how well this goes. If you have 10 accounts on this stream, then you're not going to win because you have multiple accounts. As for the team comps, um, Twitch is a very risky choice. He can put out a lot of damage, but he's also very squishy, of course. But the Morgana is an excellent choice. Um, I like to say that uh, supports and jungle should try to really solve problems with their team. And Morgana does that very excellently. She has her snare, she has her ultimate, she has black shield. So really, she has all of the tools to keep Twitch safe, assuming that she plays correctly. I'm a little hesitant about the Elise pick, and I'll explain why. Elise is the sort of champion who is very early game dominant and falls off. In fact, there is um, uh, when it comes to length of game and win rate uh, correlations, Elise win rate just dives the longer the game goes on, more so than any other champion. Meanwhile, Zed, Shivana, they are champions that really grow stronger as the game goes on. 
So I'm a I'm a little hesitant that she may be the weak link in their chain early on. Hopefully she is able to do well early game to um, uh, really get stay relevant as the n minutes stick by. As for Varus Leona, that's a mean combo. The double ult means that they are very locked down. That being said, Morgana does have black shield, and both champions do tend to telegraph their. Uh, abilities. So we'll see whether Morgana is able to uh, deny that. I also really like the heal on Morgana. Heal got buffed with the newest patch quite significantly. It now gives a speed boost and it essentially cancels out the damage from an ignite. So it may actually be a superior choice to barrier. I, I, uh, I, I like... Oh god. All I can hear is myself. Can you turn off your mic please? One second. Okay, sorry about that. So I, I like heal as a, a bot lane spell right now, but it's it's only useful if you are able to um, survive the initial burst. If you have if you're versus a team where their their burst is going to be overlapped into a split second, uh, then you're going to have issues. Heal isn't going to be as useful as it might have been. I l I really like exhaust on supports again because it reduces amounts of damage. So if you're versus someone who's going to be trying to jump onto your team and doing a ton of damage, whether that's from auto attacks or if it's from skills, exhaust is huge to, to just provide an insane amount of protection. Sorry about that, Mumble froze. And it froze when my mic was triggered. Fair so enough. it was like locked open. So this is an AP virus it looks like. That's very exciting. So I would leave a, a Quinn as an AD carry. Mage Virus is a lot of fun, and he's surprisingly viable if people group up. If they spread out, then, mm, you know, your potency is in trouble because you are not getting the blight stacks on everyone and exploding them. <laughs> I'm also very excited to see uh, Quinn as an ADC, because she is potent as an ADC. I talk about her strengths as a top laner, but she's no slouch in bot lane either, although she does have more defined weaknesses down there. Jarvin who? Valor. Who's there? Okay, so it looks like uh, Aisling is going to be able to come help Shoutcast for this match. Who is that? That was the showcaster we had a few weeks back. She did quite a good job. Oh, the the female one. All right. Yes. Should I stick around for color commentary? Yeah, you may as well. Oh, may as well. I see how it is. Just kidding. So in terms of item builds, everything's pretty standard across the board. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Again, though, Pantheon not starting with uh, a flask. And when you're versus someone who's resourceless, you're just going to run out of resources and you're not going to be able to trade. Now, that would be different if, let's say, he had a jungler who wanted to camp and gank really, really early. But that's just not the case here. Jax kind of needs to scale up, and his ganks aren't that potent. I'm also not a fan of the long sword start on Zed, and that's because I believe D-Blade uh, is a more rounded alternative. Oh, I, I, yeah, sorry, I didn't even get to that. Yes, Duran's Blade, if you want an offensive start, is definitely the right course of action. Also, if you wanted, a Doran's Shield wouldn't be that bad, because in order for AP Virus to do any damage, he has to first land auto attacks. So on bot lane, we see the power of the new heal. Leona lands an E, drops a Q onto Twitch, uh, and then... Quinn follows up with a Harrier auto attack and then a vault into another auto attack. Morgana popped heal and they were both able to get away to safety. All right, so we see first blood coming out. I'm actually just going to rewind because I didn't catch any of it. Uh, so he hits level three and immediately goes in with his shadow, ignite, and I believe flashes for the final auto attack and uh, I believe it's his E. So really good pickup on him. Uh, that just boils down to level breakpoints. As soon as you hit a new level, you want to be landing something, and that goes doubly for the first few levels when a new level equals a new skill. Now, uh, towards Morgana, 
you never want to use your uh, your your shield, black shield, until the enemy is already engaging. Because if you do, they've just wasted a cooldown and they're free to engage five seconds from then. Top lane, Elise and Shivana go in. They put both damage onto both Jax and Pantheon. Pantheon managed to escape but blows flash. Mm -hmm. And here we see Pantheon has no flask. He has no sustain. So he's going to have a lot of issues here. Hey guys, so I'm just uh, getting into the game right now. Okay, perfect. Are you guys at live or at a certain time? Right now we're at live time, yes. We're at 4.37, just for clarity. Right, so we see Leona I landing and engage here. No dark sh black shield coming out from Organa until the, all the CC is already finished. And same as before, if you're using it too early or too late, then it's not going to have its desired effect. Just a small note, I'm not the biggest fan of the in the world of the Aegis, uh, not Aegis, but it's called the starting uh, Targons on Leona. And that's because I think a ruby crystal may be slightly better. You don't get the gold generation, but you can get a sight stone on your first back. Mm, I, I really, really enjoy Ruby Crystal on tanky supports because you're going to be trying to fight early and those stats are going to be more useful to you than the 50 to 150 gold that you would get from using a GP10 item. Not too sure if you guys mentioned this, but I think the bot lane picks are a little interesting in terms of AD carry. I haven't seen Twitch AD carry in a while and I haven't really seen Quinn either. Mm, Quinn it's definitely I too... Bought, I bought Quinn for him today. <laughs> it's definitely two newer picks that we're not really used to seeing as often. That being said, their support picks really mesh well with the playstyle that most of these AD carries are going to want. Twitch needs to be able to stay out of sort of CC, and he needs time in order to land his combo. So Morgan is going to be able to set that up nicely, whereas Leona and Quinn want to be the up-in-your-face style uh, of bully gameplay. So uh, they, they just mesh really well together, and I'm interested to see how that scales into the mid and late game. Varus forced also, back again. Mid, yeah, Varus getting incredibly low from the Zed. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Zed does against. I mean, Varus does against the Zed because of Zed's crazy, insane um, poke and burst. I'm wondering if Hurricane would be at all a useful investment on an AP Varus for the purposes of spreading blight. It technically is, but it's still not gold efficient. Like AP Varus is not that strong. But generally, if you're doing it, I, I believe the build, and correct me if I'm wrong, chat, because I don't play it. I believe when it came out, though, you would build things like Deathfire Grasp, Hurricane, and then like a Death Cap. And the idea was you spread your stacks really, really quickly, you DFG someone, use a skill, and I believe it could do more than 100% of their life, like, versus anyone. I've actually never heard of AP Varus, so I'm, I'm really interested to see, like... <laughs> How this is going to work. Well, the idea is that Blighted Quiver is percentage health damage that scales with AP, and if you combine it with something like a, uh, a Deathfire Grasp, you can deal something like 140% of current health. So it's just a, a one-shot assassin, but it, it's not that good. A quick note, we see that blue team has a thousand gold advantage over purple team, and that's largely coming from CS advantage, as they only have one kill up. At this point, Shivana, uh, we, we already commented a number of times about the no flask start on Pantheon, and Shivana's really abusing that fact. She's picking up every CS that she can here, not necessarily getting all of them, but doing a pretty good job of CSing, and just constantly shoving into tower to try and draw aggression away from other lanes, and to try and make Pantheon wi miss as much farm as he possibly can. Elise swinging around, it looks like she's going to try to land an E and gank, but she can't quite get the positioning right and just backs off. Morgana very low on mana here. They need to be watching this. And again, we're seeing the exact same thing with the Black Shield, where it's used when no one is trying to use a skill onto you. You're just wasting that cooldown and wasting your mana in the process. Up on top lane, Aggression is really living up to his summoner name on Shivana. He is pushed very far. He's taking multiple tower hits, and he's also not warding. And he's really just uh, ripe for a gank from Jax right now. Mm -hmm. But as we mentioned, Jack's jungle has horrible ganks. They're so unreliable. Literally, you try and jump in, they use a, any sort of a gap closer escape, reposition, anything like that, and then Jack just sort of sits there 
doing nothing. Granted, but with no wards, and while you're literally under tower taking hits, I it feel like... It looks like that jacksing might just happen, but Shimana does drag in away, and like you said, pro for never, she's going to be escaping. That is a small victory in that she did have to blow her dragon form, but Shivana can build it up so quickly if she isn't challenged in uh, auto-attacking. So I'm not sure how uh, how tangible that will be in the long run. Pantheon landing some good damage onto Shivana here. Uh, I'm interested to see if this turns into a significant kill potential, or if they're just sort of going to go back to farming. Down on bot lane, we haven't seen any kills yet, but Quinn does have about 12 CS up. Meanwhile, Elise is diving on Pantheon, doesn't quite get the kill, and backs off, which is uh, Pantheon's passive was up, so I believe that was the right choice. Jack's also coming mid, in mid. Jack's trying to get a gank onto Zed. Zed jumping towards Varus, um, still not being able to do much, getting an ult onto Varus, and Varus not quite getting enough damage, but he does grab the Varus kill. And it looks like he will be escaping. Wow, that was, an, that was a really good 2v1. Mm -hmm. The various repositions he did with his shadows there were incredibly well used. He had already used his shadow right before Jax ganked. So instead of getting stunned, he jumped slightly out of position but saving himself from CC. Then ulted back towards Varus to create more distance. And then his shadow came up after time and was able to use it to escape after his kill. Right, that's Varus' biggest problem as a ADC is that he's just simply not very mobile, and as a mid laner, that weakness is just being really pronounced, especially against the Zed. Yeah, and on AP Varus, you need to be able to land consistent auto attacks in order for you to dam your, to really do any damage, and as a result, you're not going to be able to actually fight him. So Quinn picks up a long sword and a uh, BF sword. Coming back down to bot lane, uh, she is losing a little bit of her CS advantage, but she is actually uh, she does have boots up on Twitch. But otherwise, they're pretty much equal in items, which is a bit of a surprise to me. And every time I see them engage, they just they land a lot of damage, but don't really have the kill potential. And as much concern as I've had with Morgana's use of her her black shield. She, her heals have been on point. She's healing and cancelling out engages relatively well. Also, if I can point out the warding from Blue Team, the warding is incredible. I mean, it really looks like they have Dragon... They have complete vision over Dragon in that river. And, um... If they could possibly get a Dragon, I mean, if they could kill mid lane or bot lane or just get their lanes pushed out, they could get, they could get it really easily. Just from lack of warding from Purple Team. Zed's ult is coming up right around now. What I would like to see is them to cycle some people towards mid. It looks like uh, Elise is going to go by. As soon as she's finished that, I would like to see them try and collapse on to the AP virus one more time, pick up a kill there, and then cycle down towards Dragon. They Actually, could two-man that very quickly. Oh, okay, we have a disconnect coming out. Uh, I would like to see them pausing, because we can do that in this, but we'll, we'll see if they go for that or not. Just a note about warding, you mentioned how well covered that uh, dragon was, and the best part about that is it's clearly a team effort. It's not just the support picking up all the wards, you have the jungler uh, helping out as well. So it's really important when a team comes together to ward instead of just expecting the support to do so. And as a support player, it makes me so happy. I'm just like, oh my oh, god, you too. know wards exist? <laughs> I buy wards as an ADC, and I've had mid laners yell at me. They're like, don't you know where the carries? We don't buy wards. <laughs> what are you doing? And, and I'm it like, does what? look like the pause is coming out. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I actually played Thresh earlier. I landed five hooks in a row, and then my team was like, oh my god, Lucian, you're a god. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> really? <laughs> There's a comic where it's just a, a Alistair shielding a Tristana, you know, like, taking so much damage, shielding her, and the entire time she's just talking mad trash, like, you wish you could carry like me, and I'm like, that's my life right there. It's so true. Uh, hopefully this Elise will come back before too long. But seriously, a ward is 75 gold, and it's essentially a map pack, so it's very surprising to me that uh, people are so resistant to buying it. And ultimately what it comes down to is people go, I want damage so I can get kills. But wards enable you to get kills. So 75 gold for 300 gold for a kill is a very good trade, if you ask me. Oh, it's so true. Actually, last season when pink wards were so OP, I bought a bunch of them because I was playing support and pink wards are strong and that's how you win games. 
the enemy team was raging at me that I would dare to buy a ward and be so try hard. I was like, dude, this is how you win games. I was actually playing ranked. This was like a couple weeks ago, and I covered um, Baron with wards because it was something like 45 minutes in. And our our uh, mid goes, "GG, no wards from support." And I'm like, "I have three down on the map. What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Yeah, but only at Baron." And I'm like, "Yes, because that's all that is physically possible." Yeah. So the game ends on pause. It looks like they're going to decide to go without Elise. Um, well, it's going down onto Twitch. Leona Zenith going down as well, and the Quinn will be ulting and getting this kill. Sky Strike is just an excellent execute that a lot of people don't consider. Um, it allows Quinn to do a lot of damage, and it also gave her the ability. Uh, she should have Vault up right now, so if Morgana had come after Morgana, her, she could have escaped. I'll put the flash from Leona. You can look at it from both sides, bot lane. First of all, Twitch should not have stayed that close versus a dive and harass team without a support. And on the split side, Morgana probably shouldn't be leaving their AD carry in that situation. That being said, she had to go clear wards. So if you are doing something like that as a support, I always try and I, I try and over communicate. I let my team know exactly what I'm trying to do. Hey, play safe, I go clear wards. Oh, I have to buy. Right, that sort of information, they can ignore you all they want, but at least you've done your part. Meanwhile, in mid lane, we see that Zed has about 30 CS on Varus, which equates to, I believe, two or three kills. Um, and Up now he's top, we bot. see a 1v1 between Shivana and Pantheon. They both get incredibly low, but it looks like they will be backing off. The thing is, Pantheon needs to be getting kills over Shivana because uh, he falls off as the game goes on, especially as a top laner, while she only gets stronger. And right now she has about 10-20 uh, CS on him, so I'm a little concerned about his inability to close out any fights they have. And also, we saw a gank from um, Zed. He came down from mid into bot and got a double kill onto Quinn and Jax. A 4 zero, zero Zed with 100 CS at 15 minutes. That's, That's really rough. scary, yeah. Even without a jungler, I'm still betting on blue team here right now. Mm -hmm. And this is what I would expect to see in this sort of a matchup. Zed's just going to shove and roll. going down in top and Pantheon will be flashing away. Some people will say an ult for a flash isn't worth it, but with Shivana, um, since her ult regen is based on her auto attacks, I believe that was totally worth it because she can get her ult back far before Pantheon has flashback, and that buys her so much more aggression in lane. It also stops Pantheon from being able to flash stun her and Jax, you know, coming in for cleanup. She has a lot more freedom in lane now, and then she's really going to push that advantage. As a top lane, when you lose your flash, it's especially scary because if the jungler co comes into your lane, as Pantheon, who has no natural escape, you can't really do anything. I see oh, Leona they're down onto Morgana, and not too sure. Nope, they will be disengaging bot lane. Also, Jazz going on to Zed down in mid won't be enough damage. Oh, but the very salt does it, and Jax gets to shut down. So just a note on bottom, Morgana and Twitch escape because of heal, and we've seen that twice now, where heal allowed an escape from a, a real pickle. So I'm excited to see heal becoming more of a vile bottom lane choice. I don't know if we'll see it in tournaments, per se, but I do like the idea of more variety in bot lane summoners. Oh, me too. I agree. I actually really like the new heal. I like the fact that it removes the... It removes kind of ignite, you know, ticking... Uh, dots, and I like the fact that it's kind of more of like, um, like a target heal now. Yeah, and, um, because heal fell out of favor because everyone just started taking Ignite. There was no point in taking heal because Ignite would cancel it out. And then everyone started taking Barrier as a response to Ignite, and then, ever like, now it's, now Summoner, we got very, uh, stale on bottom line. ADC would always take Flash Barrier, and then you would always take Ignite and Flash on a support, sometimes Exhaust. Uh, making heal uh, more competitive, I think, will really shake things up. Yeah, and, and personally, as a support player, I'm totally cool with having more options in terms of summoner skills. I liked the kill potential that I had from running Ignite. Hell, I even liked having the option to run Exhaust on certain champions. But being able to have sort of the, the sort of rock-paper-scissors interaction that the three are going to have now, is it's good gameplay, it's good game design. Ignite is still, even though heal cancels it out, it'll still be useful if you have uh, a Caitlyn, for instance, because she will have vision for Ace in the hole. 
So Lisa's back in the game. She's level 8. Um, she is only a level behind Jax, actually, and all less than 10 CS behind. So the disconnect does not hurt her terribly much. Mm. Now we do see Jax di getting a lot of counter jungling done. He to stole away the blue buff, wasn't able to take the red, but did get a decent amount of damage onto Lee. so I would expect Elise probably to have to back after this. She's at half or less health, so gonna have a hard time fighting. Now we see Varus trying to escape. Pantheon's not really coming down, and he's definitely gonna die down here. Purple team swinging around, looks like they're about to take Dragon, and uh, that's, I believe, the right call, but they should really clear that uh, ward in the back. Blue team will be trying to converge onto them. We see Morgana and Elise just standing around the wall, but Jax does jump into them, and so does Liana. We will possibly get the kill down here on Elise, and no, no kill. Uh, Twitch coming in to get the cleanup on Jax, and I'd possibly a kill on Leona as well. I'm not too sure if that that dragon call was the best. They really needed to make sure after Varus died. Um, to Shivana and said, I think they really needed to make sure that it was safe and, like you said, to clear that ward. Once they saw that ward, I would have backed off. I don't think the dragon call, I think the dragon call could have worked out. I don't think it was a fantastic idea, but I think it would have worked out if they had not gotten greedy and jumped over the wall. Because oh, yeah. Quinn had no way to follow them and they uh, jumped right into a Morgana ult. Now, I, I would like to also point out that using the repel from Elise, if she's not able to go to a minion, she comes down exactly where she started it. So generally, you just want to kind of group around where she used it, and you're guaranteed to clean it up. Blue team did not do that. I, I believe they were able to pick it up with a flash, but then died in the process. So that's just something to keep in mind that if she's not going to a minion, she either goes to a player or comes back down where she was before. So just stand where she, she used it, and you know where she's coming down. A fun fact about Elise, um, while she was in development, a lot of the designers were arachnophobics, and they didn't want to... I believe your mic just cut out, Requiem. They had to help other departments critique her uh, spider form animations, because they were uh, kind of arachnophobics in the animation department. I'm the same way, so I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I'm not looking at spiders. <laughs> They apparently had to tone her human form down. She would be all like hunched over and like really inhuman looking. And they were like, no, 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 I, I can't deal with that in my game. Uh, down in mid, we saw a kill going on to, um, a, a kill from Zed going down onto Varus. And also down in bot lane, we see Quinn picking up the kill on Morgana. Um, I really believe that, um, Quinn and Morgana are so much better aggressively than than Twitch. Quinn and Leona are so much better aggressively than uh, than Twitch and Morgana. Morgana's more of she's actually more of like a a defensive peel support right now. Um, I think mainly because uh, purple team spotlight is just so ahead. It seems like Morgana was a response pick to Leona because Morgana does have the skill set that says, "Oh, you want to go all in? Let's dance." But that's not how she's playing. She's playing more like a Janna, if anything. And I oh yeah, she, I definitely agree. I think she may not be that familiar with the character. She just knows that in the meta it is considered a counter pick. And I'm not a fan of picking your champions like that. Like we said earlier, comfort over a counter. It does look like a purple bot lane will be going down in mid. Not too sure if Zed is a realizing of it. No, he is not. And it will be a four-man gank down on mid, but he might be getting a kill onto Varus. And he does. He does jump around from shadow to shadow and turn a four versus one into a one-for-one one exchange. So big props to Zed for that. That was very well played on his part. This Zed is so incredibly strong. Honestly, if I was Varus, I would <laughs> not even get close to him, I... even if my team was coming. I'd probably be peeing my entire pants if I was Varus right now. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what's sad is, if you're playing in solo queue, a Zed is either going to be like a faker senpai jumping from shadow to shadow, or he'll just run up to you and die, and you have no way of telling until it's too late. Mm -hmm. uh, Grimm's <sighs> Productions is asking if we're doing another <laughs> workshop <laughs> game after this. Uh, Requiem, your mic is on again. My bad. One second. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we are not doing another game today. We do them every Sunday, though. After this, we're going to be doing some viewer games. Uh, just because we don't have that many people who are, are ready for the next game, 
And uh, we're getting a little tired here. I've been doing them all afternoon. Oh my goodness, they're going down onto Varus. Varus getting incredibly low from the Shivana, jumping onto him. But it looks like Purple Team will be able to follow up. Zed, however, coming into the fight, will be getting down a kill onto Pantheon, getting quite incredibly low. Morgana continuing to go in. Purple Team, Blue Team is so and Purple Team is not going to be able to do anything about it. And it looks like Zed trying to ult down onto the Jax and getting a kill onto all of Purple Team, and that will be an ace. Um, I know. A note for Quinn. Quinn really acted very uh, scared there. She popped bird form and then she sort of danced around outside of the fight when if she had gone in and uh, popped W and Q, she would have put down a lot of damage. So she danced around and she went in a little too late. She popped Sky Strike very early. It's an execute, so popping it early really cuts down your damage potential. And then she was a low health uh, uh, human form. And again, she danced around outside of the fight and ended up dying for it. It's really hard as AD carry to decide like when to go in and when to stay back, I think. And um, it really just takes a lot more practice and just developing a game sense in order to really know when to go in as AD carry. Um, but I do agree, Blue Team did a really good job of disengaging and then re-engaging onto Purple Team. And also, um, it was basically a 4v5 um, with Blue Team against Purple Team because um, Elise was not in that fight at all. So I think... Definitely, if Purple Team had just engaged in all together, rather than trying to run away and miscommunicating, um, Purple Team could have won that fight. Yeah, going in versus staying out is a tough choice, especially when you're Quinn, because her uh, attack range is so short, and Vault is her only escape, but is also her main burst tool. So, for sure, that's a tough choice for her, uh, for her to make. And I think that's why Quinn isn't exactly um, quite up to par in terms of her champion design against other AD carries is because she has to get so close, and because she's more of more of an assassin rather than like you know a long range AD carry. Right, I've been playing her top lane quite a lot, and even then she is still extremely squishy, and uh, has trouble with escaping without popping all of her offensive skills. I think she's a much better top lane than AD carry. Yeah, I would completely agree with that, just because she can just go full split push and harass mode there. It is very champion dependent though. Shivana ult going down onto Varus, and Varus just going down so easily, but Shivana getting incredibly low, and they will be getting a kill onto Pantheon. Really good call from blue team here. So, and Varys Zed going down onto the Quinn, should be able to get the kill. Um... Jax trying so hard to disengage, trying to leave, but it's just going to be a double kill for Zed. Possibly a triple kill if he can get a kill onto this Leona. Uh, and it looks like he might. Yeah, at this point, blue team just sort of needs to push up end to end. Uh, they, they have the inhib this time. I would expect to see them taking top tower after that. Uh, the rest of the team is up in about 10 to 15 seconds. It seems unlikely that they'd be able to just, they'd be allowed to just siege an end, but they might be able to. It's a little tough to critique Purple's performance when you have an 11 and 2 Zed. Because at that point, he is such a game changer that it is tough to say whether Purple Team is uh, making mistakes or if Zed is just so strong. I think what Purple Team should have done, especially against an assassin like Zed, is to really just group up. Because, I mean, if you think about it, Zed can really only potentially burst down one person. I, I agree, yes. Um, we did have issues with AP Varus. Honestly, though, it didn't really get to demonstrate itself. We try to avoid troll picks in these, uh, only because it makes it really hard to offer advice when the champions you're picking aren't even really considered viable. Uh, but that being said, if you were going to play AP Vars, you definitely wouldn't want to do it versus a Zed. And uh, Zed was definitely doing a very, very good job. Uh, in the past, and in this circumstance, we are going to be graduating Zed, which basically means that we appreciate you coming out, you did a great job, but there's not too much advice to really give you at that point. Uh, you are, you're definitely playing better than the average bronze, silver, or low gold player, uh, at least with that champion. So we're probably just going to go ahead and promote you, and uh, thank you for participating. In the meantime, though, I will have you guys go over the item picks and final commentation about uh, champion synergy, how they uh, use their team comp, and uh, we'll, we'll take things from there. We're probably going to jump into viewer games next, so for those of you who would like to play, make sure you're in the Pro For Never chat room in the League Client, and then we'll be, we'll be able to do that.
Just one note, um, Zed, if you send me a Twitch message, I will create a piece of art for you uh, celebrating your graduation and thanking you for participation. So if you send me Rayqueen, R-E-Q-U-I-N-E, -E, a Twitch message with the champion you would like to accept your reward, I will create some art for you. Wow, that's really nice of you. I'm an artist too, but um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I can. I can make a bunch of art for people. <laughs> the key is to have no self-esteem, so that you hope they will like you if you make art for them. That's so depressing. I know. That's. I. I might have gone a little too dark with that humor. Okay. So, do you guys want to go over item builds and such? Uh, so Shavana has Bork, Sunfire, um, and Ninja Tabby. I don't have any complaints with that. Uh, it gave her tankiness, chasing potential, and um, split pushing power. So no problem. Yeah, I there. saw I saw a lot of Bork use from both Shavana and Zed, which is awesome. I think Bork is a really good item, especially on those two champions. Um, but what I see happen usually is people just forget to use it, and it, it drives me crazy. I'm like, use your Bork, use your Bork, and they did. They use it a lot, so I'm happy about that. For sure. Um, Elise, Elise disconnected, so she doesn't have a full item build. It looks like she was going for Ancient Golem, which is, I believe, the right choice on her. We're seeing another Bork on Zed, as well as a BT. Um, just a note, Hydra is also a very good choice on Zed. It gives you more, sta uh, more stats, assuming you are not stacking the Bloodthirster, and it allows you to auto-attack reset. I'm not too sure how I feel about um, the Morgana trying to rush that Zonia's because I feel like um, Morgana was really behind and she wasn't really playing aggressively like she should have been. Um, so honestly, I think I would have preferred like an Aegis or something more defensive on her um, just because it didn't really seem like she was using that AP to her advantage. What do you think? I, I really like having Hourglass on Morgana, but I do agree. If you don't have, first of all, she wasn't having any real impact in lane besides her disengage, which is all well and good. But in terms of kill potential, she wasn't exactly raking in the gold. So it might have been better to to just sort of slow things down. Also, I, I really don't like the Ruby Sight Stone. There's no reason to upgrade it. Oh, yeah, I agree. With Twitch, he has the Hurricane and Bloodthirster. We've talked about Hurricane a lot. It's not a gold-efficient item, um, a Static Ship or a... Phantom Dancer likely would have been a better choice in giving you more stats. And then um, on the other team, we have Pantheon, Brutalizer, Last Whisper. Again, we like to, we would have liked to see him start with a Flask. Uh, he lost a lot of trades. He simply did not have mana against a resourceless champion. Mm -hmm. I also, I don't know if it's just me, but I would expect to see Pantheon with a little bit of lifesteal. Because if not, you're just going to come out so far behind in most trades. Maybe that's just me, though. No, I think you're right, because he was constantly going back, and that gave Shivana a lot of room to farm. Mm -hmm. Now, Jax, as a jungler, I have issues with. But if you are going to play Jax jungle, you pretty much play it as a farm lane. He wasn't able to finish his Trinity Force or his Blade of the Ruin King, so he just sort of pops back and forth between his item builds, so it's a little all over the place. He did an okay job, but as a jungler who doesn't have that much kill potential early, I would have liked to see him farm a little bit more in the jungle. He only had 75 CS. Uh, on Varus, we have a lot of concerns with AP Varus. I don't know why you would build Lich Bane on it. DFG, Source Boots, Void Staff, Death Cap, those are sort of the items you want. Lich Bane is okay, but it did get nerfed. And if you want your skills to do damage, you're going to need something else at this point. He just wasn't able to go in range, and versus a Zed who, who really was doing a good job, he just didn't have a chance to build too much. Leona has uh, Boots 1, Sidestone, Face of the Mountain, Warden's Mail. Um, I would have liked to see her get a uh, Talisman, because the uh, active is simply so strong on it. But uh, maybe Boots 2, uh, Cooldown Boots, is a really good pickup on Leona, but other than that, I don't have any problems with her build. And then Quinn has Bloodthirster, Zeal, um, Boots 2, and it looks like she was building into a Last Whisper. Um, again, a Stag Shiv is a good pickup on Quinn, because her wave clear is kind of mediocre otherwise, but yeah, those are fine picks otherwise. 